Okay, hi. So this is the revision for tropical rainforest end of year. Um, reminder: the content for this area will be from page seventy-two to one hundred six, as well as the last bit from page one hundred and twelve to one hundred and nineteen. So for this first video, I will be looking at the first portion where we look at what exactly are considered tropical rainforests. Right. So bear in mind that this is just a quick review. Uh, I will not be dwelling into any details. Uh, however, what you need to do is after you have watched this video, go back to your textbooks and do a thorough revision based on the specific examples that may be listed in the textbook. Now, what is important is always remembering the fact that we are living in Singapore, and as a result of that, uh, most of the data that we will be looking at are related to Singapore. Okay, so if you're looking at case examples, it will be most ideal, and it will be actually easier for you if you could list Singapore-based uh, examples. As you can see here, these are some examples of uh, tropical rainforests okay, and some of the beautiful plants and animals that you do see in the tropical rainforest. Right? Typically, what kind of rainfall do you expect to see in a rainforest? Do you expect to experience what kind of uh, average temperature? These are all important information that you should know and you may, may, uh, you may be requested to reproduce some of this content information in the examinations to show that you truly understand what a tropical rainforest actually looks like feels like and general is like. Where would you find a uh, large diversity of plant species? Okay, once again, tropical rainforest is where you find a huge amount of different species coexisting together. Okay, and, and as we previously explained, this is largely also because of the ideal climate, ideal um, environment that encourages a rich biodiversity, but also because when you think about the layering in a tropical rainforest, you will you should be able to see that it's not one layer or, or two layers. Actually, every single uh, sub layer of the tropical rainforest is able to hold a huge variety of different plants and, and animals that have adapted uh, and have adaptation uh, byproducts uh, to allow them to survive in that layer itself. So you, you know, on a on a simple a vertical. Uh, plant layering, you can have three or four different layers of plants in the same, same uh, vertical space. This is a good segue as you move on into the three layers. right? So you look at the three common layers that you should know, the undergrowth layer, the canopy, interlocking canopy layer, and then the emergent layer. So for those of you who may have started your revision somehow or rather, you may have come across this already. What is important about the layering are uh, two, two, two very key things. Okay? First and foremost, you must be able to let me know that you know how to sketch the layering of the rainforest. So producing that sketch that we tried in class as well as during HBL is very important. You need to be able to sketch three distinct layers on um, an insert or in on a blank piece of paper or a box that's given to you. You should be able to tell us what these three layers are what are the relevant information within the layers itself, what is the height that each of them reach, what are some key elements about this. Like for example, if you're talking about the emergence, you have to tell me they are the tallest trees. Okay, they are the ones that go up to above 80 meters, right? Above 30 meters and all the way until 80 meters. Okay, give us an example, right? Give us an example of a tree that is in the emergent layer, um, either your tulang or the kapok tree, right? Similarly, for the canopy layer, interlocking crown is an essential thing that you must mention. Okay, as you move into the mid section under the canopy layer, what will you see? Right, twenty to thirty meters, you will see things like your lianas, your appetites, and uh, canopy once again, very important. Before you move to the portion below the uh, canopy, and you look at the undergrowth layer, which is basically below twenty meters. Right, where you have very little sunlight. Okay, what does that mean? You have very little vegetation. The trees here are short. They're trying to go go upwards to reach the sun. So they all have very thin, very tall, straight, uh, pencil-like trunks. Adaptations. What are the bark adaptations? What are the branch adaptations? Right, that allows the, the trees in the tropical rainforest to survive. What are the adaptations of the leaves? Can you sketch some of these adaptations? Are you able to explain? For example, if you talk about waxy leaves, don't just tell me, okay, the trees in the rainforest have waxy leaves. Why? 
Remember, some of you uh, may have experienced the lesson where you brought in the leaves and you actually had to feel it and you had to sketch it. Uh, for some of you, you were told to go back and explore the leaves around your neighborhood, right? And you would have seen that in your neighborhood, there are, there are similar uh, tropical rainforest trees that can be found. And these leaves have different adaptations, okay? So your job is to tell us what is the adaptation, which part of the tree has the adaptation, and what does, how does the adaptation actually help? Okay. Drip tips. Okay, fruits and flowers, some are uh, smelling very nice, some having strong taste to attract animals for dispersal. Okay, uh, let me talk about roots as well, uh, buttress roots, which is very important because they help stabilize your very tall trees. So, besides knowing what the tropical rainforest is, what kind of plants you see in the tropical rainforest, and uh, having the ability to explain layering in the tropical rainforest, is another final part of this that is important are your six very big uses of the tropical rainforest. So always remember, water catchment, right? The areas with more trees will have higher transpiration rate and as a result, you will have a larger water catchment in that area. So in Singapore, our largest water catchment area is the Central Catchment Nature Reserve, which is the accumulation of the nature reserves around McRitchie, Pierce, Upper and Lower Pierce, and Seletar itself. So this is very important to us. This actually allows the island to gather a lot more rainwater. Okay. We are also actively using the tropical rainforest as a population, as a, hu as a human race, to recycle okay, oxygen. So they also help to keep the earth cool. Um, and as we remove this, we remove uh, the green lungs of the earth, we are disrupting this oxygen cycle that you see here. And as a result of that, you tend to have more carbon dioxide trapped in the environment and that leads to global warming. Okay. It's also more importantly habitat to plants and animals. Right? Millions of species that are already living in the prairie forest have been lost and we are in the process of losing more and more of them with our deforestation efforts. Indigenous people, right? For some of you, you may remember a role play game where uh, you were told to take up certain roles, right? and one of the groups in your classes would have been one of the native tribal leaders. Okay, So native tribes, they do live in this uh, tropical rainforest. They have a very uh, cooperative and cordial relationship with nature. However, we are the ones who have been chasing them away and reusing the rainforest, repurposing the rainforest for much more destructive uh, purposes like agriculture, industries, and also building residential areas in urban towns. Okay. So for the indigenous people, we have to remember that rainforest is the only thing they have. They do not have a supermarket, they do not have 7-Eleven, they, they can't go to the neighborhood um, prime or cold storage to buy stuff. So everything they need right, is actually manufactured by themselves or purchased, or purchased uh, not really purchased, but hunted from or picked up from the rainforest itself. So to them, this is their be-all and end-all. Uh, they, some of them do have the ability to do some form of cultivation, right? but bear in mind this is very low level and a non-disruptive form of cultivation. They do shifting cultivation. Okay, So what exactly is shifting cultivation? You have to go and do a bit more reading about it. Uh, is it as damaging as the commercial cultivation that the rest of humanity does? Okay, Think about what, how much they, they use, uh, how much land they clear, what kind of nutrient replenishment plan do they actually have? And at the end of the day, after they left this piece of land that they're cultivating, can the land be used after a while? Okay, so this is important. So shifting cultivation is not all good, it's not all bad, like most things in life, but it is something that the indigenous people have to do to survive. Right, well, what else can we use the tropical rainforest for? Well, it does have a lot of wood, so it's a very healthy source of timber, and it supplies one-fifth of the world's industrial timber. Okay. Uh, we don't use it as firewood, but then again, there are many countries where the very poor actually still depend on timber for firewood. Medical application, uh, I always talk about this. Um, as we start to deforest the rainforest, right, many, many plant species will have been eradicated, will have gone extinct. And uh, as a result of it, their potential, okay, not actual, huh? this is potential. The potential medicinal value would have been lost before we could have uh, 
maybe done experiments to check it out and then then maybe we have lost a, a couple of cures for cancer okay or maybe a cure for hiv or, or all you know maybe there will have been a cure in some flower or some plant or some fruit out there that would have cured covid but we may have lost it because of the massive deforestation that we have carried out thus far okay so some of these plants uh, have proven to be very useful have proven to have had very good medicinal value but uh, at the rate they were going to and uh, we are carrying out deforestation right you are going to lose everything okay so once again uh, different people look at the rainforest and see different things right for some of some of the loggers and the, the people who are extracting nutrients and, and uh clearing the land right for them this is a, a way to earn a living right to to earn money okay for the native tribes this is their life right if you remove the rainforest they will die they have nothing else okay and then for some of you eco tourists uh, it gives you a break from your city day day to day life in the city uh but can we all learn to share i think that's the bigger issue here right with all these people having all these different demands for the rainforest if we can actually find a common middle ground a happy middle ground rather um it would be much more useful okay so with that we come to the end of the first part of the revision right hope this video has helped you in some way once again i want to remind you uh, your your rainforest chapter right it's a little bit more because we have not tested this at all so it will be from page 72 to 106 and subsequently 112 to 119 so watch out for the second video that will be launched soon bye